Hey fam, this is Eileen, Minister Eileen Nicole. I don't know why I always forget to say that, but <laughs> my name is Eileen Nicole. But I'm coming back with book, the book of Acts chapter 5. We're going through a reading um, through Acts 101. Um, and we are going to be going through the whole book of Acts. Eventually we'll be going through um, a study of the book of Acts as well. But for right now we're doing just the reading. And then we'll get into the study, actually breaking things down um, as they, as we should, so that we can get a good wisdom and understanding. Um, but this is just a high level overview of the book of Acts, and we're going to be doing a reading for that. Um, so um, first, I'd like to start with a prayer, and then we'll get into the word of God, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for uh, allowing us to gather here today. I ask you to please forgive us for the sins that we've committed against you, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I ask you to please cover our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our spirits with the precious and mighty blood of Jesus Christ. I ask you to bring peace upon each and every listener in, uh, that's listening here today. I also ask you to help us to find our purpose, each and every per person to find our purpose that is within your will. And anything that's without outside of your will, I ask you to please take that away and to remove that. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, I thank you and I pray. Amen. Okay, so um, first I want to start with a Bible promise. And we have um, this one that God wants us to know today. Um, this is from the book of Psalms, chapter 37 and uh, verse 18. I'm reading this out of um, uh, the NLT. All right, so day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent and they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. So with that being said, um, we the, the Lord takes care of us. The Lord, the Father will make sure that we have all of the provisions that we need, everything that we need. And, and that it goes right into what just happened with the book of um the previous book, which is book of Acts chapter, chapter four, where all of, uh, where, um, Peter and James got hemmed up by the Sadducees, you know, the, this, the old, the, the, this self-righteous, um, legalists. Um, so they tried to press on James and Peter and ask them, you know, who are you? preaching in the name of and they tell them Jesus and they're trying to they try to tell them no you can't do that you can't do that and they're like who is you and you know the people backed Peter and James up so they kind of backed they, they backed back but we see that in our everyday life where we're being persecuted um but the church was there the church was there and showed up and was like no we are all here and we're all together we're all cohesive and that thing backed on up. So that's the type of church that God wants. A cohesive church that stands for Jesus Christ. That church. Now, let's go to book the, the books of Acts ch chapter 5. This is how God is going to take care of us. But first, things need to be in order in the church because we all know that judgment starts in the house of God. All right. So. In the book of uh, chapter 5, we're going to get into Ananias and Sapphira and how they lie to God. All right. Um, so, but a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. A possession. Oh, I just want to say, in the book of Acts chapter 4, everybody in the congregation, the whole church, sold all their stuff and gave it to... Um, at the apostles feet they gave it to the apostles everybody sold everything and gave it to the apostles now the apostles job is to divide everything up and give it to the, the, the church we're going to get into what's happened after they sold everything this is before they sell everything but before that this happens but a certain man named ananias and sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price his wife also kept privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back a part of the price of the land? 
whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not, not, not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came upon all them that heard on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound, uh, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. So there's an expert here in my Bible that says, not all miraculous interventions are for, uh, for blessing. In some cases, God brings supernatural judgment upon those who would endanger his work. Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Ghost and died on the spot. When it says gave up the ghost, that means they died. If you ever, if you ever read the Bible, if you read it cover to cover, you'll see it. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad because Abraham gave up the ghost or the, or the Moses, they say gave up the ghost and that wasn't, it, it wasn't bad. But sometimes when it says they gave up the ghost, it's not good. <laughs> but in this case, it was not good. So um, now moving forward in verse seven, and it was, and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in, and Peter answered unto her, "Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much?" And she said, "Yea, for so much." Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the, the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the and of the rest durst no man join himself unto them. But the people magnified them. And believers and the rest durst no man join himself to them. But the people magnified them. And believers were the more were the more added to the Lord, multi multitudes both of men and women. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on the beds and couches that the least that at the least um, the shadow of Peter's passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed by every uh, healed every one. The anointing was so strong on Peter's life that on some occasions those who were sick didn't even have to touch him, but just being touched by the shadow brought healing to their bodies. Listen. Remember when Jesus said that you would do greater things? That right there is, is it's like one. It's like because Jesus was was a, a high priest, but which also makes him a prophet in addition to God. Um, people like to leave the God part out and say, "Oh, he's just just a prophet." He was a prophet and a high priest uh, and God. So, but his pro Jesus prophesied that we would do greater works. Um, but the, the, um, the shadow of Peter was blessing people. Yeah. So in verse 13, 14 says, and believers were more added to the Lord multitudes, both men and women in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least of that, at the least, the shadow of Peter's passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which had, uh, which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were both and they were healed, every one, all of them, all of them were healed. Just the shadow, like that is crazy to me. I mean, not crazy, but like, like, like that's just so like wonderful. Like that's so magnificent. Like. 
I can't believe it. I mean, I can not believe it because it's, it's here in the word, but like, wow, that's amazing. Amazing. All right. Then the high priest rose up and they all, and all that they, that uh, were in, were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, um, and were filled with indignation. Oh, they got angry. They were jealous. Um, and, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people, all the words of this life. And when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught, but the high priest came and they and, and they that were with him and called the council together and all that this and all the Senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. Wait, did I read that right? 20 verse 21. One more time. Sorry about that. And when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught, but the high priest came in and that, and they that were with him and called the council together and all the synod of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told saying the prison truly found we shut with all safety and the keeper standing without uh, before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within now, when the high priest and the captain of the temple of the chief of priests and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Um, then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then um, went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. The church is who they feared. They feared the church who was repping for God, who was saying, hey, this is God's word. We want to hear God's word. And you're not going to sit here and take this priest because he's preaching God, God's word. It wasn't for nothing else. It wasn't for no money. It wasn't for no gold. It was, they was all protecting God's word. And they were, these, these were, these were some of the purest believers because they were fighting for the faith. They were fighting for the faith and they, they were right to fear the church because, but God put the, the courage in them to move forward, to, to make sure he said, the, the, because they thought they were going to be stoned and they probably would have been stoned. Let's, let's keep moving forward. So uh, verse 27, and when they have brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them saying, did not we straightly command you? that ye should not teach in this name. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the apostles and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his, uh, with his right hand and be a prince and a savior for the, uh, for the, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that they obey that obey him. When they heard when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. They was like, What? <laughs> Let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit don't play. It said, cut to the heart. Uh, verse 34, then stood up, uh, then, then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named uh, Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For... Before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. 
After this men rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will be it will come come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily uh, be ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had um, and they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus Christ and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach in Jesus Christ. You ain't going to stop this word. You ain't going to stop it. And they had it. The best thing for them was to listen to that, to that doctor of the law. That was the best thing for them to do. Um, because if they would have done something to Peter and James then, or the, any of the other apostles then, will we be hearing about that? We'd be hearing about what happened to them. <laughs> but um, that is the book of Acts chapter 5. That, that concludes that. So that right there is talking about how people that came up against the church. First, it was Ananias and Sapphira lying about them selling their property and their goods because they were going to disperse it evenly upon among the church. But they was like, well, let me just keep a little bit. And I'm going I'm to give y'all, I'll probably, I'll be on the rest. But I'm going to keep a little bit and I'm going to just lie about it. That's what happened. That's why they died. Because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Because Peter, it says, the, the, listen, in the books, uh, it says that the Holy Ghost was so strong on Peter that the Holy Ghost was asking, well, so y'all, so you're telling me y'all sold it for $500,000 and, and this is what's right here? And it was like, yeah. But they sold it for five hundred and ten thousand dollars, but they kept the ten thousand, hypothetically, and gave them the five hundred. No, that wasn't the directive from God was to sell it all and lay it at the apostles, all of it, not keep ten grand out of the five hundred thousand dollars. wasn't part of the deal. Faith, faithfulness is going to get you a long way. In the body of Christ. It's going to get you a long way with God. We have to be faithful. And 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 true. And obedient to what God is telling us to do. Even when we fail and mess up. Be truthful about the failure. We have to be truthful about it. And ask for forgiveness for that. Because the one thing that they could have did was say. You know what? When they was confronted with it. They could have just said, you know what? No, I didn't sell it for five hundred thousand. I sold it for five hundred and ten thousand. So I, I apologize. Forgive me for that. That was completely wrong. I shouldn't have did that. But no, husband and wife was like, no, we gonna keep the ten thousand. Y'all can keep the five hundred though. It's just a little bit. A lie is a lie. God don't need your ten thousand dollars. <laughs> He don't need the little bit. But what he needs is the whole truth. Because that's worth more than anything. God needs the whole truth from you. And he needs your whole obedience. Fam, it's been a wonderful time spending with you reading the book of Acts chapter 5. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out before we go. Um, Ananias and Sapphira came up against the church when they lied to God. And took from the church and the people. Because God was protecting the church right there. Because everybody was supposed to be dispersed evenly. Then God protected the church again. When the Sadducees tried to come up against, you know, the, the apostles. 
and tell them again to stop to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. The church stood up for God in chapter four. God stood up for the church in chapter five. Well, God is standing up for us always, but it's very direct in chapter four. And, you know, they point it out in chapter four. And then in chapter five, it points out where God um, just miraculously just stands up for the church. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful uh, read. I love reading the book of Acts chapter five or the whole book of Acts, but uh, it just gets me excited because I know that the, there's going to be a great church coming up. Uh, this is going to be a great church, the book of Acts, because you're going to be doing the acts that the apostles did. It's our job to be prepared for Christ's return. We don't have that much time. But the good thing about it is, is if you are not on point with Christ, you can. Where are you at with Christ? Make sure that you're in good standing with Christ. Make sure that your salvation is secure. And the best way to do that, excuse me, the best way to do that is to make sure that you have given your life to Christ. Make sure that you have been baptized in water and in holy fire. And then from there, you're going to be directed. God is going to lead you because the spiritual work is that first part. That's your groundwork. Right, accepting Christ, baptized in holy in water, holy water, baptized in holy fire, fire and water, holy fire and holy water. Okay, so that's the spiritual groundwork that you have to do, and then after that, you get into the Word of God. Okay, and then in the Word of God, you'll be able to understand the spiritual things and the physical things that we have to do because there's it's a two part walk. A spiritual walk and a physical walk. But I pray for you, brothers and sisters. I pray that peace be upon you in the precious and mighty blood and name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you are in love with Christ. And I pray that you are in life with Christ. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Praise you, Father God. I thank you in Jesus' name. I thank you. And um, follow me into the next one. Because we're going to be into... Um, Acts chapter 6. Okay. So I will see you there, fam. I love you. Bye.